Hi. One of the common questions I get asked is about the approach to a baby who has either transient kidney of newborn or aspiration pneumonia. It can be meconium aspiration or liquor aspiration, where the baby is not improving as quickly as you would expect. Of course, uh, all these conditions are of variable progress, and some of them may improve quickly by one to two days, while a few of them may persist for five days or so. But the concern starts when uh, baby continues to be tachypneic after five days and is still not improving. So the few steps you can do to make sure these babies improve one is to ensure we get adequate pressure uh, if the baby needs it. So some of you have mentioned that you give oxygen alone. Remember that if the lung has a condition which affects the lung complaints, you need to give some pressure to recruit the lung volume. Until you recruit the lung volume, the underlying condition may not improve. So if you do need pressure, if there is recessions, if the baby has increased work of breathing, that is an indication that you need to recruit the lung using pressure. The pressure needed may not be very high, so you can manage with high flow of three to four liters even in most of these babies. Giving oxygen alone is needed if the baby has no distress but needs a little bit of oxygen, like the baby who is almost coming off oxygen in BPD. Uh, but in majority of the other conditions where there is a lung disease, you want to give. A little pressure so the high flow is a comfortable device to use if you have it optiflow or vapor therm both can be used so this is one important concept that you need to give pressure where you have lung disease and uh, just oxygen will not help the other important point is that many of these babies don't have a normal lung they are in the recovery phase so giving them suck feeds has two difficulties one is you are increasing the load the work of breathing uh, the baby has to focus on the work of breathing and at the same time coordinate the suck and swallow. So there is a chance that they have micro aspiration while they are trying to suck the feed. And uh, this micro aspiration may take them a step back instead of going forward and continuing to improve. They are going a step back and they don't improve as well as you want. So this is one important thing that you need to remember. If Unless the baby has no respiratory distress and is ready to come off, there is no real need to suck feed these babies because... Of course, the baby can suck on the empty breast uh, when the mother is cuddling the baby and it helps, skin to skin care helps. But the real suck feed progress, they, these are term babies most of the time, they are not going to take time to establish suck feeds. So it's okay to keep them on tube feeds. I normally prefer to keep on two hourly tube feeds so that the volume in the stomach at any stage is not very high. The risk of reflux is reduced as well. So this is the second important point. After these two points for a couple of days, by day seven, for example, if the baby continues to have the respiratory distress, I start nebulase butosonate. So what is happening in these babies, even though the etiology is not chronic lung disease, the lung inflammation does play a role in the delayed improvements. It can happen with aspiration pneumonia. It can happen with TTN if the pressure you used initially initiated some inflammation in the lung. So you are giving butosonate to reduce inflammation so the baby's improvement the spontaneous improvement takes over. So you give the 0.5 milligram BD of the nebulized palmicot, which uh, I prefer to use. And uh, if you don't have palmicot nebulized, you can use the fluticasone inhaler as well, uh, two puffs uh, twice a day, using the spacer and mask. Uh, the parent should be updated clearly that this is taking longer than expected because they will be speaking to people, they would be Googling. So reassure them that this is just an atypical course and the baby is otherwise well. Of course, you may need to screen for infection if you have any concerns of uh, rise in CRP. Most of these babies would be off antibiotics after 36 hours in any case. You have to consider echo as well in the especially severe cases uh, where you can't be sure there is no underlying heart disease. And uh, remember that if the baby continues to need this support after two weeks, three weeks and so on, it's not typical at all. And these babies might have underlying primary ciliary dyskinesia. Uh, if there is situs inverses or if there is a family history of similar problems, then it would go with that and you can do the genetic testing for that. I had a couple of babies who had uh, primary ciliary dyskinesia. One of them had a sibling who had uh, Cartagena syndrome. And then because this history came up in the prolonged uh, improvement, uh, the improvement didn't take place in time. We investigated and it confirmed the diagnosis. So this is just a simple approach on what to do if there is a prolonged uh, course. I hope this helps. Thank you.